This precious little baby is called Kasulu. Kasulu is an eastern black rhino, and her birth is amazing news because black rhinos are critically endangered. But thanks to the hard work of conservationists in East Africa and here at the Chester Zoo in the UK, we now have one additional black rhino on the planet. I'm Jada Elcock, and this is your first chance to see. We'll be meeting zookeeper Rachel McCann in just a minute to find out more about her new friend Kasulu. But first, here's everything you need to know about black rhinos. There are five species of rhinos that currently live on our planet. Three of these species live in Asia and two live in Africa. You can tell these are African rhinos by their two big distinct horns. Males use these horns for aggression and fighting in what's known as horn jousting, and females use them to protect their young. And they also make a pretty handy spade for digging up roots. But did you know that rhinos don't have very good eyesight? Instead, they have excellent hearing and a really sharp sense of smell. They can even find each other over huge distances just by using their noses. Black rhinos have it pretty tough though. 50 years ago, there were about 70,000 in the wild. 25 years later, so many of them had been killed for their horns and so much of their habitat had been lost that there were only about 2,500 left. Thanks to a massive conservation effort all across East Africa, numbers are now at over 5,000, but it's still a constant battle. And we've got a long way to go before there are 70,000 again. Now, Kasulu is a type of black rhino called an Eastern black rhino. The only ones left live in Kenya, Tanzania, and Rwanda. You can tell she's a black rhino by her hook lip, which is evolved for eating leaves. White rhinos that mostly live in South Africa have a square lip for grazing and eating grass. Here's Rachel to tell us a bit more about Kasulu's birth. So I hear she kept you waiting. All of October we were waiting, it was getting towards the end. We thought, oh, maybe she'll carry over into November, but it was really at the 16 month point. So 29th of October she was born and it was around half five in the evening. So normally actually they do give birth overnight because in the wild, that's, that's the safest time. It's dark, it's quiet, there'll be no predators around. So she did give birth quite early. We, we did catch it on camera, but a few of us keepers were here to watch it on camera with our own eyes. So that particular evening, she was really restless, pacing up and down. She looked visibly uncomfortable. So we tend to leave them to it. Emma's a very experienced mum, very calm and friendly rhino, so she knows exactly what she's doing. Obviously we worry if there are any complications, but she's an absolute pro at this. Within a blink of an eye, our little baby rhino popped out and then there she was. So we didn't know she was a female until a couple of days later. We normally leave mum and calf on their own in a quiet space to bond. One person goes in, gives her her food and we leave. So after a few days, we all get to be introduced to her. Emma is really friendly and really calm. And she was more than happy for us to all pop our heads in, have a little look at her. When they're first born, they are up pretty quick, um, but they do spend a lot of time finding their feet. They have got very large, clumsy feet which they do trip over. So it's just getting used to well, waking up in the wild and walking on our big feet. Looking after rhinos must be an amazing job. What does a usual day look like for you? Our day is a very busy day. It involves picking up a lot of poo and giving out a lot of food. So that's our main, main, most important roles and make sure that all our rhinos are comfortable, happy and well fed. This is serious work too, isn't it? Why are Eastern black rhinos so endangered in the wild? One of the main reasons that our eastern black rhino is so endangered is because of the value of their horn. That's what they're mostly poached for. And the second threat that they do have is habitat loss. As our human population grows, we are moving, expanding into their space. They've got less space to range and they do kind of clash with communities and, and, and humans. And we're probably their biggest threat. Just about how we can get communities and rhinos to coexist happily without taking up too much of their space or them destroying agricultural lands. And why is it so important to keep a breeding population of rhinos in zoos? They're a backup population. It's a worst case scenario. If we were to lose them in the wild completely, we still have them in zoos. Once they're gone from the wild, that's it for a wild population. This is why these guys are so important. They'll keep the, the genes going. Well, Rachel, you have a fantastic job. What do you love most about rhinos? They're all different. All of it, even to look at, all shapes and sizes, but their personalities are what really strikes us. Some are relaxed, they're calm, and others are really highly strung. We have playful rhinos, we have quite shy rhinos, so it's almost one extreme to the other. So yeah, their personality is what really stands out and that's what makes them really special. And they also look brilliant. They're these big beasts with a huge horn. They're just fantastic. Wow, rhinos are pretty cool, aren't they? Imagine taking care of an animal that's the size of a car. Let's have another look at that baby rhino. She's so cute. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.